after the 40 days, then what? Do we finish up with the prayer? Bwana asifiwe. Si tuliomba 40. Si sasa tunaweza tukangojea mpaka July tufanye 21. <laughs> Amen. That's what I'd like us to look at today after the 40 days. Then what? Prayer continues. Hallelujah. So prayer is without ceasing. Whether we are in the 40 days or even after the 40 days, prayers continue because that's the lifeline of a believer. It's the lifeline of of a believer. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, I want to base my sharing on a few scriptures, but the main scripture will be Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew 7, verse 7, if it can be projected for us. Can we read it together? Ask and shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Verse 9. Or what man is there of you? Whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Bonasifiwe. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. And you know prayer is asking. Prayer is seeking. And prayer is knocking. It's all the three aspects combined. And many times, we don't get because we do not ask. Or at times when we ask, we ask amiss. We don't ask in the right way. And so we end up not getting. And we live without the very basic things that, are, that we would otherwise have gotten if we asked. On the 11th of January, um, I was still on leave. And that night, <laughs> the Lord was ministering to me something. It came in form of a dream. <laughs> and I saw someone come and sit next to me and give me this scripture, Matthew 7, 7. And he read it out loud. Then I told him, but I know this scripture. And I thought I was going to make him excited. But as I told him I know these scriptures, he told me, yes, you know it because you have been reading it, but you've not been practicing it. So that took me aback a little bit and I asked how I've been asking. 
kamstua kidogo akauliza kwani nimekuwa nikiulizaje but this is what he said yes you've been asking you've been seeking and you have been knocking but you have been asking in the wrong way because when you ask you ask as if the person you are asking is limited the way you are limited ah kumekuwa ukiuliza na ukitafuta na ukibisha lakini umekuwa ukiuliza kwa njia ile isiyofaa kwa sababu umekuwa ukiuliza kama yule mtu unauliza unaitisha ni mtu ambaye ako na anapungukiwa kiasi and so you don't ask with the intensity that is required. Huulizi kwa ile nguvu na shauku ambayo inastahili kuwa. And then he told me there are very many things that you've not gotten because you've not been asking. Kuna vitu akaambia kuna vitu mingi sana hujapata kwa sababu hujakuwa ukiitisha. And you've been thinking like our heavenly father is the same as your earthly father. Umekuwa ukifikiria kama kana kwamba Mungu wetu wa mbinguni ni yule baba yako wa hapa duniani. Who used to tell you he doesn't have money he is broke. Mwenye alikuwa anakuambia kwamba hana pesa amefilisika. And then he continued on we continued with the conversation. Remember it's a dream. Ah uh, ilikuwa <laughs> ndoto na tulikuwa tunaendelea na kuongea. And he said akasema hivi this year 2020. Huyu huu mwaka wa I want you to try asking extravagantly. Nataka ujaribu kuitisha bila kipimo. Then the conversation ended. Ah na hao maongeo ikaishia. And I woke up. Akamka. And I remember sitting up and looking through that scripture that hour akainu akaamka na kuweza kuangalia hilo and read it again and it appeared so new at that juncture akasoma tena na akaona hilo andiko lilikuwa ni kama kana kwamba lilikuwa mpya kabisa and so i asked god did you say i should ask extravagantly akauliza mungu umesema ya kwamba nikaulize kana kwamba uh, bila kipimo then i am going to be extravagant indeed akasema kwamba mimi basi nitakuwa wa kuitisha bila kipimo because there is nothing that you do not have kwa sababu hakuna kitu ambacho huna there is nothing that you lack hakuna kitu ambacho unakosa everything is found in you kila kitu kiko ndani yako and i remember getting into prayer and i started asking extravagantly na kumbuka nikiingia katika maombi na kuitisha bila kupima at that time i was wondering how my son is going to go back to school in the month of may kachuo nilikuwa nauliza mtoto wangu kijana atakuwa atarudi shule vipi katika mwezi wa 5 because the fee um, at the college where he is is very high kwa sababu aile uh, kare ya shule ambapo ambako anasomea iko juu sana and i was thinking how my daughter will go to college na alikuwa nauliza mtoto wake binti yake ataenda shule vipi so those were the first things i brought before the lord and i told him god silver and gold belongs to you hayo ndio mambo ya kwanza alileta mbele ya mungu akamwambia kwamba the feather na the herb ni za And Lord you know my account is very limited same to my husband's account. Unajua ya kwamba account yangu hazina yangu imepungukiwa sana na hata ya mume wangu. But now that you have said I should be extravagant I want to start with these ones. Na kwa sababu umesema nikauliza bila kupima nimeanza na haya. And I am committing them to you. Na nitaweka haya mambo mbele zako. And I want to relax knowing that these children are yours I'm just a steward. Najua nitapumzika nikijua ya kwamba mimi tu ni mtumishi na wewe uko pale. The second thing I was trusting God for was uh, my daughter has been having a challenge with um, the left leg. Ah, kitu cha pili ambacho alikuwa anaaminia Mungu ni yule mguu wa kushoto wa mtoto wake. And so the doctor we saw was saying that there is a clot in the vein. Daktari yule aliwamwalimuona alikuwa anasema ya kwamba kuna damu imekaukia pale. And so he was saying we need to see a cardiologist. Akasema kwamba wakaone daktari yule anatibu mambo ya moyo. Because the place where that swelling was had turned black, totally black and we are being told it's black because there is no supply of oxygen and adequate supply of blood because of the clot in the vein. Alikuwa anaambiwa kwamba mahali pale palikuwa pamekuwa peusi kwa sababu hapakuwa damu inaweza kutembea vizuri mahali pake. And so I remember but from that time to the end of january i started asking god for the resurrection of anything that is dying in the leg of my daughter and for him to dissolve that clot because he has told me to ask and it shall be given me so wakati wako anza kuitikuliza mungu akaweza kufanya kile kitu ambacho kimekufa katika mguu huo wa binti yake kaweza kuinuka tena na ile damu ikaweze ku 
Anza kutembea tena. And towards the end of last month I remember that was my prayer. I went somewhere and that was my prayer. I went and I told God I want to see the pigment, the skin color uh, of the of the leg beginning to come back to normal for me to know because I'm just a human being as a sign that you've already started touching this leg. Akaamini Mungu ya kwamba akauliza Mungu akaweza kufanya pale mahali pakaweza kuacha kukua peusi kama vile ndio akaweza kuona ishara ya kusema kwamba panapona. And I remember I'd gone to wherever I'd gone on Wednesday and the whole of that Wednesday night that was my prayer. I was speaking life, speaking life to that leg and speaking a resurrection to anything that has been affected because of that clot. Alikuwa anaomba hiyo Jumatano mzima alikuwa anaomba ya kwamba uh, Mungu akaweze kuleta uhai tena kwa ule mguu uh, na alikuwa anaomba siku mzima na usiku mzima. Because the Bible says ask and it shall be given you. Kwa sababu Biblia inasema kwamba uliza na utaweza kupata. And so God just desires that we take him at his word. Mungu anasema kwamba tukaweza kumchukua kulingana na neno lake. Things may look like they are very very desperate but he says ask and it shall, it shall be given to you. Mungu anasema kwamba mambo yanaweza onekana kama hakuna tumaini lolote lakini anasema uliza na utaweza kupata. Praise the name of the Lord. On Monday this week. Ah Juma Juma tatu this week uh, juma hili i receive a call from someone alipokea uh, alipigwa simu na mtu fulani someone whom i had helped and i thought they had forgotten and nikaachana naye hiyo miaka imepita 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 ah alikuwa amesaidia mtu na akafikiria huyo mtu amesahau miaka imepita and so he calls and says you know you i, th- I know you think i have forgotten how you helped me akasema kwamba na usikiria najua unafikiria kwamba nimesahau vile ulinisaidia and so i laughed and he said you know what uh, when is your son going back to college i said he is going back in the month of may okay. how much is the fee nikamwambia the fee per semester is 100000 and he said can you bring me the fee structure i'm paying two semesters amen <laughs> akauliza kwamba mtoto wako kijana wako anarudi shule lini akasema ya kwamba ni 1100 uh, na akamwambia leta hiyo uh, fomu na nitalipa uh, semester mbili ask and it shall be given you Lisa praise the name of jesus the how he will give you is not the issue you don't even need to know how he is going to work it out vile atakupatia atafanya hiyo muujiza si biashara yako all that you need to know is that when you ask he gives to you. Kila unastahili kujua ni kwamba ukiuliza atakupatia. Because he is your heavenly father. Kwa sababu yeye ni Mungu wako wa mbinguni. He is a father who does not live on earth lest he can be influenced by people. Ah yeye ni baba ambaye haishi duniani asiweze ku fanywa kugeuza mafikira yake na watu. He is our heavenly father. Yeye ni baba wetu wa mbinguni. That was on Monday. Ah hiyo ilikuwa Jumatatu. Siku ya Jumatatu. Then uh, that very Monday in the in the evening. Siku siku hiyo hiyo jioni. Because I remember that day I only left to come to church for prayer in the evening. Ah kwa sababu siku hiyo tu nilikuja tu ka nyumba kanisa jioni. And so I was being impressed in my heart to just check the leg of my daughter. Ah nilikuwa na himizo ya kwamba nikaweza kuangalia huu mguu wa mtoto wangu. And you know what the swelling is gone the color is coming back to normal. Amen. Mguu unabadilika na hiyo kufura imeisha praise the name of the lord amen we are saying we still want to take her back to the hospital so that the doctor can verify the healing that the lord jesus christ has already done ndio daktari akaweza kudhibitisha ule uponyaji ambao mungu ametenda and so god is just faithful mungu ni mwaminifu there are times when we do not get because we do not ask. And that's why I asked us after the 40 days do we just sit back? No we are not going to sit back. We will continue engaging the Lord. We will continue speaking from time to time. That situation that is in your life that has been looking like it's impossible. The Lord is waiting for you to ask. Because what is prayer? Prayer is beckoning God to come and act on your behalf on things that are happening on earth. 
katika maisha yako. And you know when God gave uh, the earth to man so that man could have dominion, man could take the rulership of the earth in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Katika mwanzo moja 28 Mungu alipopatia binadamu mamlaka juu ya dunia, he gave it to him solely he delegated his power and his authority to mankind. Aliweza kupatiana ile mamlaka yake kwa binadamu And so just like a, an, a, a good boss when he delegates an authority of a department to a staff. Kama vile tu mkuu ambapo anaachia mamlaka yake kwa yule mtu wake ambao akufanya kazi. He does not go back to meddle in that department unless the staff tells him there's something here that needs your attention please come and help me. Harudingi kushughulikia mambo katika hiyo idara lakini uh, pengine mtu huyo amwambie kwamba kuna shida fulani anastahili kushughulikia because he fully trusts in the leadership of that person he has placed there kwa sababu anaamini uongozi wa ule mtu ambaye ameweka mamlaka and that is the same thing with our god he has delegated the earth to you and i vivyo hivyo ndivyo mungu ametuaminia dunia We can look at that in Psalms 115 verse 16. Tunaweza angazia hilo neno katika Zaburi 115 mstari wa 15 verse 16. Mstari wa 16. This is what the Bible says. The heaven even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Bwana asifiwe. He takes care of the affairs of the heaven. But the affairs of the earth he has delegated to you and to me. So anything that goes on on earth, in earth is supposed to be under you. You are the one who is supposed to be influencing those things that are happening on earth yale mambo ambayo yanatendeka hapa duniani yako chini yetu ni sisi tunastahili kushughulikia now having that in mind tukiweka hayo katika mafikira yetu when we require him to come and deal with a situation within our jurisdiction wakati tunastahili tunamuita yeye akaweze kushughulikia mambo ambayo yako katika mamlaka yetu then we call him through the art of prayer tunamuita kupitia tendo la maombi we give him permission to come now into the place that he had given to us tunampa ruhusa akuja mahali ambapo amekuwa alikuwa ametuachia and whenever we call him he comes na wakati wote ambapo tunamuita yeye anayuaja because the bible says in jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 sababu biblia inasema katika yeremia 33 if we can get it in amplified version kama tunaweza pata katika hiyo tafsiri ya jeremia chapter 33 verse 3 yeremia 33 that we should call unto the lord and he will answer na kwamba tukamuitie tukalitie jina la bwana na atatusikia look at that we'll just put it up again weka tena jeremia 33 verse 3 yeremia 33 mstari wa Call unto me and I will answer you. Need mimi na nitakujibu. And tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. Nitakuonyesha mambo makubwa ambayo yalikuwa yamefichwa ambayo huwezi elewa. So even as we are uh, the, the earth has been delegated to us there are things that are hidden things that are confined things that within your human uh, mind you cannot be able to understand and you cannot be able to distinguish and for you to be able to get to know them then you need to call unto the Lord and he will answer you he will not only answer you but he says I will show you great and mighty things hata kama tumepatiwa mamlaka hapa duniani kuna mambo ambayo amefichwa na ni lazima tukamuite ndio akaweze kutufichulia na kutuonyesha it could be in your workplace he will show you those hidden things atakuonyesha hata kama mahali pako pa kufanya kazi it could be in your marriage he will show you the very confined and hidden things that you need to know so that your marriage can work hata katika ndoa yako kuna mambo yamefichwa na pengine unastahili Mungu akuonyeshe hayo mambo yamefichwa but it talks very clearly when he says call unto me lakini ana nena kwa uwazi sana ya kwamba niite mimi so there is a condition the condition is that we must 
call unto him. Then he will answer us. Meaning when we do not call then we will stay ignorant and God will still be a faithful God. He will still be our heavenly father. But because you have not sought to know he can endeavor to leave you in your ignorance. My prayer is that in the year 2020 we are not going to live in ignorance but we will call unto him. We can call unto him through prayer and fasting. We can call unto him through prayer alone. But the Bible says he will answer us. So it depends on the depth of things that you need or you require him to handle for you. That will determine whether you will fast or you will not italingana na uzito wa mambo yale ambayo unataka Mungu akayashughulikie ndio itanganisha kama utafunga ama hautafunga praise the name of jesus if the things are so heavy in your heart then you'll find yourself fasting without even the church pushing you to fast for the 40 days kama mambo ni mazito sana utajipata wewe mwenyewe unaomba na kufunga bila hata kanisa kusema ukafunge because there are times when we have discovered we've given people the 40 days but some don't even use them Maybe it's because they do not have heavy issues in their lives. But if you have an issue that has ever bothered you, <laughs> then let me tell you, you will not eat seven days a week. You will at least look for one day or two days when you can pray and fast so that God can unearth things that you do not know, things that are mighty, things that are confined, and things that need understanding by you. Pastor Alice told us once something, uh, I, think it, I, don't, I can't remember the year she said it, but she said that uh, during the days when they were growing, waking up in the morning used to be a struggle. And so one time their mother told them Praise the name of the Lord. And now that she is a grown up definitely she does not sleep the whole day. And that's what I'm here to say today. It is okay. You can live an ordinary Christian life. But a time may come that you will be pushed to pray and fast by your own things. My prayer is that you do not wait for that time. But that now you you will have to live a fasted life beginning now, now that we've finished the 40 days. So that in a particular week, you don't eat 24-7 if you want to see the Lord doing tremendous things in your life. Because he has already told us he will show us things that are great, things that are mighty. You want to be intimate with the Lord? Get into prayer. You want him to release to you his de- deepest secrets and revelations? Get into prayer. You want him to speak to you and mention you as one of his friends that he cannot hide a secret from? then just get into prayer. Make prayer your lifestyle. But it doesn't have to be pushed from the pulpit. 
kutoka madhaba huni and you'll be shocked at what god will do na utashangaa sana yale mungu anaweza kutenda when you read the book of acts chapter 12 verse 1 to 16 we won't read it now ukisoma katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume 12 this is the story of peter when he was uh, taken to prison ni hili hii ni hadithi ya petero wakati alipelekwa gerezani and his friends locked themselves out na marafiki zake wakajifungia inside a room katika chumba kimoja and they were praying for him na walikuwa namuombea they were praying for his safety walikuwa naombea usalama wake they were praying that god would rescue him walikuwa naomba mungu akamweze kumuokoa and sure enough na kwa kweli supernaturally kwa jia ya kiungu god sent an angel to come and minister to him mungu akatuma malaika kaweze kumhudumia now that is the power of prayer huo ni hiyo ndio nguvu ya maombi if peter could be brought out of prison by an angel kama petero alitolewa gerezani na malaika what can't god do in your life nini mungu hawezi fanya maishani mwako praise the name of the lord na bwana litukuzwe the bible says in uh, james chapter 5 verse 16 Biblia inasema katika uh, uh, Yakobo 5 James 5 verse 16 Yakobo 5 mstari wa 16 Aha uh-huh. James 5:16 Yakobo 5 mstari wa 16 The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man Ah uh, maombi ambayo yanatenda kazi ya mtu ambayo ni mwenye haki availeth much Inatenda kazi kubwa Remember Uh, the, when the bible says that the effectual fervent the part b the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much biblia inaposema katika sehemu ya pili ya kwamba maombi ambayo yana nguvu ya mtu mwenye haki yanatenda mengi so here we can look at key things tunaweza angalia mambo ya muhimu pale ya msingi pale this man being referred to here huyo mtu ambaye anaongea juu yake is number one righteous huyo ni mtu mwenye haki he is walking in the ways of the lord anatembea katika njia za Mungu number two, he is prayerful cha pili ni kwamba yeye ni mtu ambaye anaomba so he is not only righteous and sitting back si mtu mwenye haki tu ambaye anakaa kitako and waiting for things to move the way they will move anangojea mambo yaenda tu vile anataka but he is both righteous and he is prayerful yeye ni mwenye haki na ni mtu anaomba and that is when that prayer that he is praying as a righteous man will bring forth results na ndio wakati maombi ile anaomba yule mtu mwenye haki yatatenda kazi praise the name of the lord and so what i'm seeing there is that you can be righteous naona kwamba unaweza kuwa mwenye haki But if you are not praying lakini kama uombi things will always be constant mambo yataka tu hivyo ile tulikuwa tukiita kwa economics ceteris paribus uh, wale walifanya economics wali walikuwa nasoma <laughs> katika hilo somo la economics everything remaining constant mambo itaka tu hivyo so things you won't be getting the things that you actually deserve to get utapata mambo yale ambayo unastahili kupata so you are righteous hata kama we ni mwenye haki and we can get this from the book of luke chapter 16 tunaweza pata haya katika luka 16 verse 19 to 21 mstari wa 19 mpaka 21 luke chapter 16 Uh, Luka 16 <laughs> The Bible says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores now mark verse 21 and desiring to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table na alikuwa anatamani sana kupata zile chakula zilikuwa zinaanguka kutoka cha meza ya yule mtu moreover the dogs came and licked his sores na mumba walikuwa wanakuja wana wanaramba vidoda vyake now these are two men one was a rich man kulikuwa watu wawili hapa mmoja ni tajiri and if you continue reading when they both died one went to the bosom of abraham and the other one went to hell walipokufa mmoja akaenda kwenye kifua cha abraham na mwingine alienda kuzimuni meaning one was righteous and the other one was not mmoja alikuwa mwenye haki na mwingine hakuwa so lazarus was righteous alazaro alikuwa mwenye haki but he did not endeavor to ask god for anything big 
lakini hakuitisha Mungu kitu chochote ambacho ni kikubwa. The Bible says that he only desires desired to eat the crumbs that fell at the king's table. Alikuwa anatamani tu kula vile vyakula vilikuwa vinaanguka kwenye meza ya yule That was his greatest desire. Hiyo ilikuwa tu shauku yake. And you know the Bible says that the Lord fulfills the desires of our hearts that our joy may be full. Biblia inasema kwamba Mungu anatimiza shauku za mioyo yetu. So did God fulfill his desire? Mungu ali alitimiza shauku yake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Are we together? God fulfilled his desires because his desire was to eat the food that was falling at, from the king's table. Mungu alitimiza shauku yake kwa sababu The Bible does not tell us that at any one point he went before the Lord and asked for a full loaf of bread. Biblia ina haitwambia kwamba kuna siku alienda mbele ya Mungu akaitisha mkate mzima. I want to believe had he prayed he would have been given that bread. Na naamini kwamba kama angeomba Mungu ampe ampatie hiyo mkate angeomba. And so he sat back at the gate and all he desired was to eat the food that was falling from the king's table. Alikaa pale malangoni akitamani tu kula chakula kilichoanguka kutoka meza. And many times we live righteous lives. Na wakati mwingi tunaishi kama wenye haki. But all we do is sit back and desire things that are not of our standard as children of the king. Na tunatamani vitu ambavyo si vya kiwango chetu kama waana wa Mungu. We desire things that are mediocre. Tunatamani tu vitu vya kawaida, vya chini. And so many times when if I told you are looking for a job you're saying oh that I would get any job. Tuna wakati tunatafuta um uh, um uh, kazi. Aj, kazi tunauliza tu kazi yoyote tu and so any job will come to you utapata tu kazi yoyote but was that what god would the best that god would have given you no hiyo si kazi yele yenye mungu angekukupatia ambayo ni bora kabisa it's because that's what you desired maybe you verbalized your desire or you prayed it out loud that is what he gave to you kwa sababu ulitisha tu kazi yoyote praise the name of jesus amen the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Maombi ya mtu ambaye ni mwenye haki inatenda mambo makuu. Jabez knew this and so he, he got to a point where he told God all that you would change this life of pain. Jabez alitambua haya na akaweza kuomba ya kwamba Mungu akambadilishie haya maisha ya, ya ya uchungu and god changed his life na mungu pain. akabadilisha maisha yake god changed his way of living mungu akabadilisha mtindo wake wa maisha his boundaries were enlarged ah mipaka yake ikapanuliwa but it's because he went before the lord and he asked god to change that which he was going through lakini ni kwa sababu alienenda mbele za mungu akamwambia kaweze kumbadilishia he did not go there murmuring hakuwa hapo akinungun akwenda pale akinungunika but he asked god to change his life akaenda mbele ya Mungu akamwambia akambadilishie maisha yake now many times the enemy holds our mouth so that we do not want to pray we just want to pray the 5 minute prayer and then we walk along wakati mwingi adui anashika midomo yetu ndio tusiweze kuomba tunaomba tu maombi ya dakika tano and you know i was just looking at the book of um Uh, John 10:10 Nilikuwa naangazia kitabu cha Yohana 10:10 That a thief comes ya kwamba mwizi anakuja to steal kuiba to kill kuua and to destroy na kuangamiza I couldn't help because the thief that I know of is the Kenyan thief I've never seen another thief from somewhere the Mimi Kenyan thief tu mwizi ambayo ni mkenya And those are the thieves that I've seen I've only seen them in movies. Na ha ndio na hao wengine nimewaama katika sinema. Now this is what a thief does when he gets into your house. Mwizi anafanya haya mambo anakuambia na usipige nduru. Bwana asifiwe. Usipige nini? Nduru. The ones I see in the media wanafunga watu midomo so that this person cannot talk. And this is the thief who comes to steal, he comes to kill. He comes to destroy. Huyo ndio mwizi ambaye anakuja kuiba, kuua na kuangamiza. Now that is what the enemy does with us too. Hiyo ndio adui anafanyanga na sisi pia. He gets into your marriage, he gets into your children, he gets into your job, he gets into the church, he gets into the nation. But what he ensures he has done, anakwambia na usipige nduru, usiombe. So unakaaga tu. You are not going to pray. He ensures the appetite for prayer is gone. You cannot call the name of the Lord to come and rescue you in that situation. Anaingia katika maisha yako, ndoa yako, watoto wako, mambo yako na anakwambia usi 
kupiga nduru ndio akaweze kuingia katika mambo yako na kukuangamiza because he knows when you are praying it's like kupiga nduru god will come to your rescue anajua ya kwamba ukiomba ni kama Ukiomba ni kama kupiga nduru na Mungu atakuja kukusaidia. And he is happy as long as he can keep your mouth shut. Anatama, anafurahi sana wakati anajua ya kwamba mdomo wako umefungwa. Because when your mouth is shut he can get your future. Kwa sababu unaponyamaza anaweza upata usoni wako. He can wako. get your marriage. Anapata ndoa yako. He will get your children. Atapata watoto wako. He will get your family. Atapata jamii yako. Your health and etc. Hata afya yako ataipata. And he will destroy everything. So the first thing he steals from you he steals your prayer life. Kile kitu cha kwanza anaiba kwako ni maombi. And leaves you empty. Anakuacha tu ukiwa hivyo tu. He leaves you as a Christian who has been left with praise the Lord I am born again I am going to heaven but you are so harmless. Anakuacha kama mkristo ambaye tu anatoa ushuhuda anasema naenda mbinguni lakini hakuna kitu chochote unaweza mfanyia. In the year 2020 tutapiga nduru. Katika huu mwaka Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We will cry out to the Lord. Tutalitia jina la Bwana. In our homes, in church, wherever it is that God will give us an opportunity, we'll call on the name of the Lord on behalf of everything that concerns our lives. Popote pale nyumbani kwetu ndoani mwetu tutaitia neno la Mungu because we We need our children saved. We need our unsaved husbands saved or spouses saved. And so we will not allow him to steal our prayer life. Whether we are doing 40 days or less. Whether we are through or not. We will keep calling until we get help tutaendelea kulitia neno la bwana jina la bwana mpaka tupate jawabu in this very year katika huu mwaka we are not allowing him to shut our mouths tutamruhusu tena kufunga midomo yetu we are not keeping quiet in 2020 hatutanyamaza tena mwaka huu the lord has already said he is restoring and he is coming with demonstration of his power mungu ashatuahidia kwamba anarejesha na kuweza kudhihirisha we have to experience him ni lazima tukaweze kushu But for us to experience him we must get down to the place of prayer. We have to go deeper in prayer. You know a deep uh, the, we have shallow prayer. Mali unaomba na you can still hear a phone ring so umeshika hiyo simu unajibu text message na unaendelea kuomba. Kuna ile maombi ambapo pako karibu na ukingo wa na tunaomba tu tukijibu simu tukiweza kujibu kuandika ujube lakini tuna uh, hapo ni mahali ambapo tujapenya sana but in this year for us to be restored kati tutaweza kurejeshwa then we'll have to go deeper we have to move from the shallow places and go deeper in prayer in a place where it will be us and the lord and everything around us will cease to matter ni lazima tukaweza kupenya ndani ndio kutakuwa tu ni sisi tu na mungu and we will continue until we get answers to our prayer. Tutaendelea mpaka tukawape tukapate jawabu za maombi yetu. We will sacrifice our sleep so that situations may change in our lives. Tutaweza kuenda bila kulala ndio hali zetu zikaweza kubadilika. We will sacrifice our food so that things can be different for us and our families. Tutakosa kula ndio mambo katika familia zetu yakaweze kubadilika. And God is only waiting to hear that call. Na Mungu tu anagojea kusikia tukimuita. And he will answer us. Na ataweza kutujibu. My prayer is that we will get in deeper and deeper in the presence of the most high God. Ombi langu ni kwamba tukaweza kupenya ndani na ndani katika uwepo wa Mungu. By the time we will be getting to the 31st of December. Ndio tukifika mwisho wa mwaka huu things will be different mambo yatakuwa yamebadilika in your life in your workplace things will just be different maisha ni mwako katika kwenye ule unafanya kazi mambo yatakuwa yamebadilika so brace yourself ah ukaweze kujitayarisha because we are getting into the enemy's kingdom kwa sababu tunaingia kwenye upeo wa and we will wage war in the heavenlies we will tear down his kingdom Taweza kurarua ufalme wake so that everything he has ever stolen from us he will bring back ndio kile kitu ambacho ameweza kuimba kutoka kwetu ataweza kurejesha in the name of the lord katika jina la bwana we will keep dining with him tutaendelea 
kula pamoja na bwana in jesus name tika jina la yesu father in the name of jesus christ baba tika jina la yesu christo we thank you lord for your word tukushukuru kwa neno lako and lord how we pray that you'll help us to be doers of the same katusaidie kuwa kutendeza kazi neno hili that our desire will be to dwell in your place of prayer that we will empower our secret place that we will be willing to go deeper and deeper with you even as we wait to see you restore us and as we wait to see you Jehovah God uh, bring a demonstration of your power We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.